Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to the Spice of Life Variety Show. We are so honored that you have joined us and we know that your time will be well spent. We certainly pray that all is well in your home. And if not, we certainly offer you our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I guarantee you, he will make things all right. Amen. We give honor to Bishop Charles C. Blake, Mrs. May L. Blake, and the entire West uh -huh. Angeles family. And from our hearts to your hearts, we love you. Well, if you're familiar with the Spice of Life show, and I certainly hope that you are, you know that I am not alone, but I am here with my uh, wonderful co-host, Pamela uh, Webb. And before I introduce you to Pamela Webb, grab your pen, your paper. Uh, at the end, our contact information will be available, and we know that you will want to contact us and come in on the show. And so we do welcome your prayer requests. Uh, your comments and just know that we are honored to be with you. Pamela. Yes. You're looking pretty. You're looking awfully lovely, Dr. Lewis. What can I say, girl? Well, I know. You just can't help yourself. <laughs> but I know you're so excited. Oh, you ready honey. to get this show oh, on, right? Yes, yes, yes. And viewing audience, yes. stay put. <laughs> this is a good one. Yes. And so yes. we have an awesome, it's an awesome privilege. Yes. That God has so ordained for this day. Yes. That we're going to meet Bishop Carolyn Tyler Gittry. Oh, my. Bishop. Bishop. Bishop Carolyn. I want you to hear that. Bishop Carolyn. All right now. Tyler Gidry. Bishop Carolyn, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. What a beautiful smile. <laughs> Bishop. See, Bishop. Well, even if I came <laughs> with a frown, seeing you two ladies, I'd have to smile. Oh, oh you're it's, so sweet. it's wonderful. You're so wonderful. It's good to be here. Well, I tell you what, we, because we <clears> want to <throat> hear uh, a little bit more from you. Bishop Carolyn, from where? Actually, I was born in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. But I've been in Los Angeles since 1964 when my husband and I brought our five sons here. Oh, and uh, I have five <laughs> sons and a daughter. Wow. We've been here a few years by the time my daughter came along. But uh, Which month yeah. in 1964? September, Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came here in uh, 1964 in, in uh, either August or October, I can't remember, mm -hmm. but right around well, in that same Well, we actually left Jackson, Mississippi the end of August and arrived on Labor Day. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Probably I'll never forget that. <laughs> probably looking for uh, the better opportunity out west. Yes. My <laughs> husband was in construction and his sister had moved here and she said it never rains in California. Mm. You can work every day of the week. <laughs> and of course it was seasonal in Mississippi, you know. So <laughs> so we came for that reason. He worked at that for about four or five years, I guess, and then changed fields altogether. Oh. So. Mm -hmm. well, well, before we go on, I, I do want our audience to recognize and realize that uh, Bishop Carolyn is the third bishop, um, and third, no, she is the third second. female, second, second female bishop of the African Methodist Church. That's mm -hmm. right. And uh, we're just honored to have her in our presence. Yeah. And just we elected in July, July 5th. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. Wow. Well, when that smile is still going on. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. So we'll be hearing more about, about her, um, about her role and her administration after a while. Now, do you have any siblings? I have one sister, my oh. little sister, oh. who who lives in Jackson, Mississippi now. Oh, mm -hmm. your little sister. Yeah. Oh, she, wow. yeah, she's always been my little sister. I'm four <laughs> years older. I won't oh. tell you how old I am. <laughs> yeah, that's no, she'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> then that Right. Oh my goodness. My husband is from Hattiesburg. <laughs> oh, okay. So he's a homeboy. Right. <laughs> so That's it's not great. too far, but at least That's you're from great. the city city, That's you know, right. Jackson. Right. Well, I was actually born, people always say now, you from Jackson, but where were you really born? <laughs> I was really born in Jackson, Mississippi in an in a area called Verdon's Edition. Oh. It was in, you know, on the other side of the track. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So now, how now? How do you do? You go back often, or I, I have I, I in the last few years I've been going back. I was there last September a year ago. Okay. Uh, now that my sister is back, I'll probably be going. And, and my husband and I have even considered uh, retiring there somewhere in the far off future. You know. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So you were born, <clears throat> raised, and weird, and mm. educated in the in Jackson, Mississippi. Wow, yes. that's amazing. And so do you see do you see many of your uh childhood friends when you go back? I do. In fact, uh until recently, uh we always had a gathering whenever whenever I went back. Uh 
unfortunately, many of us have moved away. Right. Some have passed on. Exactly. But th those who are there are still my <laughs> friends. And it's like, uh, and I have the kinds of friends that while we don't talk much in the interim, exactly. when you I get still, home, it's yeah. like, I oh, just saw oh, you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I just saw yeah. you yesterday. And in fact, my girlfriend that I grew up with, uh, when we were growing up, where you saw one of us, you saw the other. Oh. Uh, we may talk once or twice a year mm -hmm. on the phone mm -hmm. from here. Right. Uh, but when we get home, you know, it's Gladys and Carolyn. Together. Oh, Carolyn yes, and Gladys. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Kind of like, what was wow. that, Lucy and, uh, uh, what was her name? Oh. Lucy's friend? You know, I mean, just real tight. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, right, okay. right. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, describe your childhood. Well, first of all, I was born, my mother was 17 when I was born. Okay. Uh, uh, my father was passing through town. Okay. So I was born out of wedlock. Okay. Uh, for a long time growing up, that bothered me until I came to understand that I didn't have any role in the circumstances right, right. of my birth yes. right. and that God was my father right. and loved me no matter mm, what. Powerful. But I was privileged to grow up in a home my, with my grandmother and until I was about six or seven, two uncles and an aunt mm. and my mother. Mm. And that was our household with my grandfather, okay. my, actually step-grandfather because he was my grandmother's second husband. Okay. But I, I, I grew up, and when you reflect on your life, mm. you, you realize that you took so many things for granted. Mm. And when I hear people now talk about their lives and how hard it was, that I was privileged. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up with people who loved me mm -hmm. and who affirmed me. Uh, and, and, and I'm discovering now as I talk to people that, that was, that's not always the that's case. That's not the norm. Yeah, you know, right. Especially right. With the, given the circumstances of my birth. Right. You know. But I had two uncles, one of them who taught me to read by the time I was four years old. Wow. Who insisted. Wow. And, and I can remember sitting on his lap uh -huh. with a comic book. Okay. And, and I would read the pictures, and he would cover the pictures and make me read the words. Oh, wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I went to school at five, I could read already. Mm -hmm. and, and at Easter time, I'd have one little dress for Sunday morning <laughs> and another one for Sunday <laughs> afternoon because oh. my uncle saw to it that I, that, oh. that I had an Easter oh. outfit. And uh, then I took it for granted. Uh -huh. You know, it was just the way it that's was. Mm -hmm. But now I realize, mm. you, know, just, it, you know, it could have been so different. Oh, wow. wow. But uh, my grandmother was, I thought, the, she was tall. and uh, I thought she was the biggest, smartest person I, I knew. Mm. Uh, she was the influence in, in my life. Yeah. Uh, she, she was mama. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and mama. Uh, was the one who, who always made me know that I could do or be anything I wanted to be. Mama, mm -hmm. Mama. And that has, that has stuck with That's me. Anything you read on. about me, you will find where I said something she about my grandmama. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is, mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and, and that's so familiar uh, to some degree in our African-American experiences. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. More oh, often yeah. than oh, yeah. not. More yes. often than not, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Powerful grandma. But uh, I, I did. I, 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 had a, I had a good childhood. That's good. Yeah. And it's reflective now because of the fact of look how things are paying off for mm -hmm. you. Yes. And look at the kind of person yes. that you are. Yeah. Very gentle, mm. very compassionate, very kind. Yeah. You know. Oh, you think so, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God I've only yeah. seen you that long. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you have had to repeat that, me. There may be some people who, who with different with they me. tell you that there are some other roles. Well, well, I mean, you have to put on different hats, right? You exactly. don't wear the same hat every day, that's every right, time. That's so right, that's so right. far, I've had a, had a good hat that's on. That's right. You don't know <laughs> Else but, okay. That's all. <laughs> uh, now, now, what about your hobbies? What hobbies do you? I, I still like to bowl, even though I haven't been bowling oh, in really? years. But that's one of my hobbies. I oh. love to fish. Oh my goodness! And uh, uh, and I haven't been able to fish right. lately. There doesn't <laughs> seem to be enough water, enough time. Uh -huh. I think it's more time than water. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, I can remember the last time I went fishing and saw it in the sea, and the fish were biting so that I had to put two hooks on my line. Oh, wow. And, and I don't get wow. in the boat to fish. No. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Oh, okay. No, no. I only fish where I can sit on the bank. <laughs> Y'all sit oh. on the bank. Yes, that's yes. The, I, that's the Mississippi Roots. <laughs> yes, yes, I can't swim, <laughs> and there's too much water out there to drink. So <laughs> You're safe. Huh? Uh, stay, on the stay on the bank. Wow. Yeah, but, but I, I found a long time ago that fishing was 
was relaxing hardly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could sit and the water is still and with the bobbin sitting on the water and all of a sudden it begins oh. to move a little bit and a little bit and you know that something is nibbling mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of reflective of what, what life is like. If you, if you just put the hook in the water, mm -hmm. life catches it oh, wow. <laughs> at some point. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, now yeah, you really, now yeah, you're really taking true. me mm -hmm. back uh, because now I can envision mm -hmm. the brown pole that uh, uh, they use with the, the little... Oh yeah, the cane. Yeah, yeah. the cane, the cane pole. Oh, right. I did, I did learn to use also the rod and reel. Uh, the rod and reel. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's, that it's, 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 it's in, in the, the wrist. wrist. <laughs> <laughs> it. But I can remember as a child, you get those uh, cane, oh. cane uh, fishing oh, poles yeah. and just sitting oh. there and, wa and watching for it to bite. Now, now oh. doctor, can tell me, can you put your own bait on? No, 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 no. no. You see, have to see, have somebody else. No, see, that's where it stopped. Okay. I love when my... Don't bother. Now, because see, you got to be able... No, 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 no. You got to be able to take the worm and put it on and just thread the no. hook. You start at the end and thread the hook. Look at that. She's good. And thread the hook <laughs> through the worm just so oh, no. so that it'll stay on the hook. Oh, no, no, no. And then you just kind of wipe your hand and pick up your sandwich. <laughs> and oh, and Lord. You know. <laughs> now that's fishing, right? That's fishing. <laughs> that's fishing. And never, and never, and never thinks anything wipe differently. Your hand huh? to get your sandwich. Yeah, wipe your hand on your jeans, get your sandwich, and wait for the wait for the fish. Now that's now that's country fishing, now, girl. I remember the first time I went fishing, and and um, my husband didn't like to fish, and so he just he'd sleep on the bank while I fished. But we were with some other people, and so they want to know, do you want me to bait your hook? And I said, no. Show me how to do it. Mm. And and he showed me how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I could do it myself. So nobody mind. They oh. didn't mind going fishing with me. Yeah, they didn't like going fishing with, oh. with me. Yeah, no, they had to bait you. Because I wasn't really fishing. <laughs> it was like, okay, well, now, now when, 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 when the fish going to, now can you take the fish off the pole? <laughs> you saw me. Take it Let me just hold the pole out there. Get out of I'm my way. She's <laughs> telling me because I will never go fishing <laughs> with her. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and so, so bowling and fishing were kind of my, ho were mm -hmm. my hobbies that I really liked it. When my children were growing up, uh, I, I enjoyed cooking because the fire boys, you know, they could make you feel Man. good. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, I, oh, oh, and, and, and my boys would see and say, Mommy, you ought to write a <laughs> oh, book. Oh. You know, and, uh, uh, but now they're just the, the two of us, my husband and me. And uh, while he likes to eat, I don't like to cook anymore. Cause Hello. He, it, you know, you got to try to fix enough for two people. Yeah, that's not fun. No, that's no fun. Mm -hmm. so, so once a year, I do an open house, New Year's Day. And I do about 100 pounds of chitlins. Ooh. Now, I know y'all don't know what chitlins oh, are. Oh, please, give me a break. I, yes, and we I do. clean them all clean myself. Them all. Because I don't, I don't, I want to eat them, and I want to make sure <laughs> I think that they clean. Uh -huh. oh, and uh, so oh, I clean them myself. Wow! Takes me a couple of days, and I'm j in the house by myself cleaning my chitlins, and then I do black-eyed peas and collard greens and okra. Oh, you throw down! Oh, and, uh, you throw down! Baked turkey and chicken and ham, macaroni and cheese. Oh my goodness! And corn pudding. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a little hungry. I'm, I'm a little hungry. <laughs> now, can you just stop right. I do. In. I do about a dozen sweet potato pies. Really? Seven up oh. cake, German chocolate cake, and so and potato salad, and so and we just have open house. Anybody who wants to come, come. Now, once I cook the food, it's up to you to serve yourself. Okay. It's, yeah. It is very informal. Ooh. Oh wow! But we never have a shortage of of commerce. If anything, I'm trying to Wow, that is fantastic. In fact, year before last. We didn't do it, and everybody was mad at us. Ah, oh, I guess goodness. so. You so started last, something. Yeah, so this customs. past January, uh -huh. we did it. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to be gone this oh. year. So well, we'll see. Well, it maybe I'll come home and do my open house. Uh, but I was I was thinking maybe it'd be apropos because then you you're you're moving to a new area and meeting new people. You think I could invite people to open house in the new area? And out yeah. in the Caribbean somewhere. Yeah, maybe oh, a few, maybe a handful <laughs> that you will meet between uh, those few months. Okay. You know, yeah, those right. few months. Uh, what, okay, you indicated that you had a wonderful childhood, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your dreams and aspirations and goals as you were growing up? What did you want to do? I, I always knew I wanted to go to college. Okay. And, uh, and, and of course, in the time that I was growing up, not every black family had college graduates. Okay. But while my mother and her brothers had finished high school, none of them had gone to college. Okay. Um, 
and a high school education then was considered, you know, very good. But I always knew I wanted to go to college. However, I got married very young. Okay. Which was also a custom in that day. Uh huh. And after being married nearly two years, we had our first child. Mm. And uh, then it was one after the <laughs> other. <laughs> right. But after the, after the second child, uh, my husband insisted that I go back to school. And so mm. I went back to school and uh, at J.P. Campbell College and mm. finished two years of that. Uh, took some classes at Tougaloo College after that. And, and then went back to school once we'd settled in Los Angeles uh -huh. when I was called to preach in 1973. Okay. I went to uh, Los Angeles Bible School okay. here in Los Angeles. Right. Uh, and just went back to school in 2000, I think it was, at Fuller Seminary oh. to finish my seminary degree. Oh my wow. goodness. So you've so, been you, you've been steadily on all my life. Home. I guess I've been that's in school good. for that's more good. or less. That's you know, good. because even when I wasn't uh, taking formal classes, mm -hmm. I'd always go and take a class somewhere, or take a workshop or mm -hmm. something. And uh, so finally, though, I, I get the master's degree, which is which is which is one of oh, for an wow. old lady. <laughs> 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 now but you so heard that. Now that right. means that for you, young, younger you women, yes. younger than us, yeah. you keep it's on doing it. Yeah. It's, it's never too late. It's never too late as long as you can think, mm -hmm. uh, and and even if you have to be in a wheelchair, because mm -hmm. we do have students at the school who exactly. are in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. So it's not mobility; it's the ability mm -hmm. to think. And exactly. if you have the ability to think, you can you can learn, mm -hmm. and 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 you never get too old to learn. Mm -hmm. There's always something, and it's learning that that really keeps you young. I mm -hmm. think, but. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, my ambition, I think, was always to do something in the church. When I was growing up, my pastor said to me, when I was about eight, what do you want to be? And I said, oh, I want to be a missionary in Africa. Because oh. at that point, that's all women could be. Right. Uh, missionaries. Right. It, it would not have dawned on me to say to him, I want to be an ordained elder right. in mm -hmm. the church. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, he would have said, well, that's not for girls. Uh -huh. Uh, but it was okay if I wanted to be a missionary uh -huh. in Africa. That was, appropriate. That was mm -hmm. what I knew. Yeah, right. exactly. I knew some women who uh -huh. were missionaries uh -huh. in Africa. Uh, and so I, but I knew I wanted to do something where the church was concerned. When my husband and I married, uh, we both worked in the church. We worked in the, in the Sunday school. Uh, we worked with the young people of the church. Mm. So we've always been involved. Uh, I don't know if I told you that my grandmother was one of the founders of our little mm. AME church, Aww, how <laughs> institutional AME church how in Jackson, how Mississippi, precious. still standing. How uh, precious. Um, and so uh, I've always been involved in the church. So I always knew that without a question, I was going to be involved in the church. In some kind of way. Preaching was not one of the things <laughs> mm. uh, okay. in okay. my purview okay. uh, at, the, at the moment. But... Uh, I thank God. I'm <laughs> wow. That's that's really yeah. special as a young girl having a sensitivity uh, toward the things of God, yes, the ministry, yeah, yeah. not knowing exactly what, right. but but knew but that there. that was your yeah. niche. Well, right. I, I knew that God was important. I knew that the church was important. And, and in fact, it was it was I it was life. I remember uh, I we walked from our house to the church, which was about a mile and a half, two miles. Mm. <coughs> and um, sometimes in, 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 in Mississippi, it would rain. And on Sunday morning, it, and you know those days when it would rain for a minute and stop and the sun so would yeah, come yeah, out, yeah. Right. and then it would start yes, raining again. Yes, yes. And I can remember getting up on Sunday morning, and my heart would just sink mm. if it was oh, raining, which meant that I couldn't get to Sunday oh. school. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one Sunday, one, one this one stands out. I had gotten all dressed, and you know, on on Saturday night you get your hair curled. Oh yeah, right. ready oh yeah, Sunday. oh yeah. Right. Had my hair curled. <laughs> I was ready to go to church, and I was all dressed, and it started to rain. Oh, and I was standing on the front porch. I remember this so well. And all of a sudden, it stopped raining, and the sun started to peeking through. And I said, Mama, I'm gone. <laughs> and I took <laughs> off running. And before I got to church, of course, it started, started raining. raining. Exactly. Oh, so my by the time I get to church, I'm drenched, and uh -huh. my Saturday night had to <laughs> But I was at Sunday school. Oh, wow. I was precious. with my friends at church. <laughs> How precious. And, but that's, you know, and, and it's always been like that for me. I have enjoyed. And that, you know, that may sound wow. like a... Say, but it's it's I have enjoyed mm. uh, 
the fellowship of the of the church. And that's why the Lord has How honored you. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, and, and that's why now we, mm. we look at uh, the second woman elected as mm. bishop of the African. We're not talking about the little, little store front over in the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're talking about the AM church. AM church. AME church. AME church. AME church. Yes, right. And so because oh. God responded to the heart that you gave him, now look. Oh, and I'm so grateful. Isn't it awesome? I'm so grateful. To Did you me. ever? I mean, <laughs> could you? I, I know. I know that you say that you were gonna. You felt like you were gonna be connected, but no, not at this point. Because you know, I I understand my church. I know mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 pastor, the protocol, the presiding yeah. elder, mm -hmm. the bishop, general officers, all of this, and it didn't. In in 1995. At one of the uh, general board meetings, the bishop gave the state of the church address, as it were, Episcopal address, it's called Bishop Cummings, Frank okay. Cummings. Okay. And in that address, he says, the church has to begin to think about electing a female bishop in the near future. Mm, 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 mm. And I don't remember anything oh. else mm. about that address. That phrase oh. stuck in my mind. Oh, my God. Oh, and I remember I was a member of the Commission of Women in Ministry. I had been president in 1984 to 1988 of the Women in Ministry. And I went back to the commission that day following the address, the following day, and I said to them, Bishop has given us an opening, but we have to help him close it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's appropriate that Women in Ministry Commission would say to the church, the church should look to electing a woman by 2000 mm. because uh, 96 was coming up. Mm -hmm. I knew it would not be possible mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. But in five years, we would be able to work toward that. And so uh, th we got the general board to pass the resolution recommending to the church that it elect a woman by 2000 to the bench of bishops. Uh, I came home content with that mm -hmm. because it had never been a thought of mine to run mm. for bishop, mm. but in about in the in the uh, months between that meeting, which was about June, I think, until uh, the annual conference here in Los Angeles, which was then, uh, well, I guess our planning meeting was like October, November. Mm -hmm. God began to trouble my heart mm. and say to me. Okay, we've got the resolution in place, but there is no woman who has signed up mm -hmm. to run for mm -hmm. bishop. You need to run. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just really oh. began to try and said, Lord, you know, I don't want to be a bishop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't be. Right. So I remember talking to my son about it. A at this time, I'm a widow. My husband has died. Mm -hmm. And so I began to talk to my sons about that, and they encouraged me. Um, and so I filed the papers, okay. and uh, I didn't know how to do it. I filed <laughs> the papers, and then I informed my bishop that I was doing it. We had a candidate in Los Angeles, uh, Reverend uh, T. Larry Kirkland, mm -hmm. who had run and was up for running. Uh, um, and so uh, I, I didn't know I was supposed to tell the bishop first and get oh. his permission, so I filed <laughs> the papers and, and, so, and asked him for a letter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, but he, you know, he he was careful to tell me now we have a senior candidate, and you have the privilege of running, but we we have to support our senior candidate. And uh, but I ran, and for the first time in the history of the church, garnered enough votes on the first ballot so that I was invited to the negotiation room. Mm. And mm. in the history of the church, the first woman to wow. be invited to the negotiation the room. Mm -mm -mm. I didn't have enough to win, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. But I came out after the second ballot and gave my support to Bishop, uh, who is now Bishop T. Larry Kirkland. Right. Uh, but continued to run between 96 and 2000. And, uh, and Bishop uh, Vashti McKenzie, also uh, uh, started her campaign after the 96 convention conference, and uh, so the two of us were running. Mm -hmm. uh, and the church was fortunate. It had two well-qualified women to choose from. But of course, in the politics of the church, there was the jockeying about not electing a woman until 2004, when mm -hmm. they had more people oh. coming off the bench, okay. and you know, we're not going to elect a woman right now. Okay. But as God would have it, the Southern Baptists started talking about not ordaining women, not affirming women, and everybody was just 
oh, just so put out at that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and we have a fierce uh, lay leader in the church, woman, Dr. Jamie Coleman Williams, okay. who, who, who literally started talking to the bishops about that attitude about not electing oh, a woman and saying, mm -hmm. you're no better than Southern Baptists if we don't follow through mm -hmm, on our promise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we didn't want to have that kind of, of egg on not. our face. Of course not. And, um, but obviously, the politics said we won't elect to. But I am grateful that God used me even to get that first, first one on yes. the bench. And That's she powerful. has been so awesome. That's powerful that never again can the church say women can't do it because she did a magnificent job mm. her first four years assigned to Africa, Southern Africa, oh my Swaziland, Botswana, in uh -huh. that area, and, and did a fantastic job. People loved her, loved her husband, and now she's reassigned to Kentucky, Tennessee, okay. 13th oh. District. Okay. But she set the, the bar okay. mm -hmm. so that when we came back in 2004, not only did they elect one woman, they elected two. Mm, powerful. So now we have three women Ooh, in the that African That is powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. Wow. We're down to the last mm. uh, moment of the, sh of the show. And so we want you to know that uh, we're inspired oh. by your life. Yeah. And we thank, thank God you. for thank you. you. Mm. Uh, in, in about, can you give us uh, a final word, maybe about 15 seconds? Well, I think that just piggybacking on what you're saying about being inspired, one of the things that I have, have been privileged to is that since the election, young girls, teenagers, younger girls, young women have, have expressed to me uh, what my election and my staying in there has meant to them, and so they've been inspired. My granddaughter said something to me in 2000 when I didn't win that, that has always meant so much. And she said to me, Grandma, you didn't win, but you showed me what a Christian woman really is like. Wow. And for me, that was, that was winning the, big time. That was the crown. <laughs> wow. Well, to you, our audience, we want you to know that we have oh. enjo thoroughly enjoyed spending our time with Bishop Carolyn Tyler. Gidry. Yes, very much. <laughs> We've enjoyed spend, spending this time with her. Uh, we want you to know that whatever God has placed within your heart, don't be fear. Just step mm. out and, and uh, take charge and, and do it. Do yes. it. Until next time, know that we love you. We're praying for you. Contact us and God be with you in Jesus' name. That was so fantastic, oh. Jessica. <laughs> wow. Oh, so oh, wow. 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 Oh, w